Lily of Lil Pilates. And in this video, we are going to look at pelvic organization. So we'll specifically look at neutral and imprint spine, going into some imprint rocks, clocks, and articulating bridges. So these are movements we do a lot in Pilates. So this video will um, kind of discuss what we want to focus, where we want to focus our attention to feel like we're getting the most out of these kind of fundamental exercises. I do have a inflatable ball handy. Um, if you don't have an inflatable ball, you could also use a uh, rolled up towel, might work as well. Um, you could also do everything we're gonna do without a prop. So not necessary, but I might use it for a couple of things. We're gonna start laying on our backs. And you're gonna have your knees bent, feet flat on the floor. So my arms are by my side. I'm gonna keep the palms facing up to help encourage the front of the chest to open with these collarbones to be nice and wide, nice and broad. <clears throat> and I'm in my neutral spine. So the back of my head, ribs, and sacrum are heavy in the mat. There's a little breath of air under the low back. So we're in the natural curve of the spine in our Pilates neutral. And then I'm gonna take an inhale here. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna think posterior pelvic floor and low belly. Tucks the tail under. And then imprints my low back into the mat. And then I'm gonna inhale and release. So neutral, space of air under your low back. And then exhale, tuck the tail, and imprint the low back on the mat, closing up the space under the low back. We'll do that one more time, inhaling to release to neutral. And then exhale, again, posterior pelvic floor, tucks tailbone to pubic bone, pubic bone to navel, navel to spine. And I want you to hold in your imprint. We're just gonna discuss our imprint here. So I'm trying to create as much length from the bottom of my ribs to the top of my sacrum as I imprint my low back on the mat. And I'm trying to make that gathering of my waist into the floor kind of as lengthened and as even as possible. So noticing sometimes if we cue belly to spine, maybe one vertebra pulls more actively into the mat than the others. We wanna think elongation in this position. And then the other thing I want you to think about is the butt clenching or are the feet pressing into the mat to get that imprint. Think more abdominals, less butt, less feet. And then from here, you're gonna release. So back to our neutral. We're gonna turn this rock, imprint rock, into a pelvic clock. So sometimes this visualization works for people. I'll give you an option B because sometimes people look at me like, I have no idea what you're talking about, which is fine. <laughs> it's, it's a confusing one. So we're gonna mobilize the pelvis in a, a circle. So you can imagine my hands are a circle, a clock resting on top of my pelvis. As I rock to imprint, I'm rocking to 12 or to noon. And then as I release to neutral, I'm rocking back to six. So we're gonna get heavy through the right side of the pelvis. Try to avoid the knees shifting. The thighs don't move, just get heavy through that right hip. And then I'm gonna curl up in through kind of nine o'clock along that right side of my low back. I'm gonna come through imprint at center at noon, and then I'm gonna get heavy along the left side of the spine, making my way through three o'clock and then down around to six. And then we reverse. So we go three up along that left side of the spine through noon, 
Get heavier on the right side, circling through nine, and then back to neutral and center is 6 p.m. So sometimes that clock on top of the pelvis, again, connects for people, or maybe after 10 times, you're like, oh, I get it now. But if it doesn't make sense for you, just imagine you have a quarter underneath your sacrum, and you're gonna draw a circle with your hips around that quarter. And sometimes that might help keep the feeling of hips heavy more than if we think about the clock on top. So as we're doing this, you might notice one side stickier than the other. You might notice just a, a mental block about reversing the direction. So as you're doing that, go as slow as you need to, make it as smooth as you can, again, without recruiting the butt or the feet. Think abdominals. So that is our imprint, our imprint, uh, our pelvic clock. You can also play, it's kind of nice with the ball. So hips can bridge up. You can bring a ball underneath your pelvis. And then with the hips elevated, you can play with maybe rocking the pelvis even away from you and then circling around the ball. And that ball will assist a little bit more in that circling of the hips. As you're doing this, make sure, again, especially as we go into more of that neutral or even into an untucked tail, watch the ribs that they don't really flare to the ceiling. So gathering and then mobilizing through the pelvis. All right. We're gonna come into some articulating bridging, a little bit bigger range of motion and strengthening through the glutes. So we'll start with the arms, still down by the side, pressing actively through the backs of the arms. Again, palms can face up. And then you're gonna find an exhale to rock through your imprint. And then you're gonna start to engage the glutes, hamstrings to curl your hips up towards the ceiling. And I'm trying to peel the spine off the floor and then I'll slowly lay down one vertebra at a time as I curl back down. So articulating bridge versus hip lifting, hips, lower, hips lowering. We try to tuck the tail under, coming into that posterior pelvic tilt or that tuck under of the tail. And then we use the muscles of the legs to curl the hips up. As we get to the top, a couple refinement things I wanna note. We're trying to keep the front ribs gathering. The ribs soften back, and you can imagine suspenders from the front uh, ribs to hips, keeping the front side short so the back side stays nice and long. And there's a lot of abdominal work to keep that tuck of the tail, asking the front of the hips to open. And then the glutes are wrapping, and my heels are actively drawing towards me so that I get my hamstrings to assist the glutes. A lot of times we'll over recruit through the glutes. So keeping that balance between hamstring and glutes here. And then we roll all the way back down. So if there's any tensing through the low back, you can always make the range of motion smaller. You can always just eliminate the hips lifting for a while until you feel okay with the hips lifting. If you want with your articula articulating bridges to make it a little bit more challenging, you can eliminate that base of support that the arms provide. So arms can come up towards the ceiling or kind of a midway point is uh, these like zombie arms. So fingertips towards the ceiling, pressing through the backs of the arms and then doing that same articulation up and down, trying to articulate with as much precision as you did when the arms were down to provide support as you curl up and curl down. All right. <clears throat> that is your pelvic organization, some of the fundamentals that we will build on in classes. Pelvic um, neutral imprint spine, the pelvic rocks, imprint rocks, clocks, and our articulating bridge. If you have any questions about what I shared with you today, please leave me a comment. Um, and if you found this helpful, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next video. Bye.